Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. In the wake of massive protests in the Northeast over the Citizenship Amendment Act, several references have been made to the inner line permit system in large parts of the region. On 19 December, the Meghalaya Assembly unanimously adopted a resolution urging the centre to implement inner line permit in the state. Earlier on the 11th of December, the inner line permit regime was extended to Manipur with President Ramnath Kovin signing the order to this effect. So what exactly is the inner line permit system? Well, the concept of the inner line permit comes from the colonial era. Under the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act of 1873, the British framed regulations restricting the entry and regulating the stay of outsiders in these designated areas. The system is currently in force in four northeastern states, that of Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram and now Manipur as well. And no Indian citizen can visit any of these states unless he or she belongs to that state, nor can he or she overstay beyond the period specified in the ILP. In addition, the sixth schedule of the constitution provides for the administration of tribal areas in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura as well as Mizoram to safeguard the rights of the tribal population in these states. On the show today, we talk in greater detail about the sixth schedule, the inner line permit regime and the powers bestowed upon these states that are covered under these. After independence, the Constituent Assembly included provisions to protect and safeguard the interest of tribals in the northeastern states. The sixth schedule was added under Article 244 of the Constitution to provide limited autonomy to the tribal regions of the four northeastern states, that of Assam, Tripura, Mizoram and Meghalaya. This was done with the purpose to bring about development in the region without exposing them to exploitation and also preserving their distinct culture and ethnic identity. The constitution has made special provisions for the administration of tribal dominated areas under the sixth schedule in Article 244. These areas include the four states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Passed by the Constituent Assembly in 1949, the sixth schedule was formulated to provide limited autonomy to tribal regions of Northeast. The sixth schedule was based on the report of Badaloi Committee formed by the Constituent Assembly. The committee report stated that there was a need for a system of administration that would allow tribal areas to become developed, which were largely underdeveloped at the time due to British administration. The report also called for protecting them from exploitation by the people in the plains and preserving their distinct social customs. Uh, the sixth schedule of the constitution make a special provision for tribal areas in four states uh, of the country that is Assam, Tripura, Meghalaya and Mizoram. Uh, chapter 10 uh, that is article 244 of the constitution of India provides that uh, and this was uh, added right from the very beginning of the constitution because these areas are having uh, tribal population and to protect their right, their ethnicity and their culture, it was decided that special provisions may be made for the tribal people of these four states. There is fifth schedule also, fifth schedule make provision with regard to other tribal areas where population is other tribal population is living. But uh, schedule six specifically deal with tribal area of these four states and the tribal people of these four states and special provision are made. The Badaloi Committee drafted a schedule to the constitution detailing the administrative mechanism for these areas that was added as the sixth schedule under Article 244. It included setting up district councils. Autonomous district councils are bodies representing a district to which the constitution has given varying degrees of autonomy within the state legislature. In all, 10 areas in the northeast are registered as autonomous districts. Three autonomous districts, each in Assam, Meghalaya and Mizoram and one in Tripura. As per the sixth schedule, each autonomous district must have a district council consisting of not more than 30 members. A separate regional council is constituted in autonomous regions. 
majority of the population regard to tribal are concentrated in this particular area it's not that in other states also the population is not there in other states also tribal population is there and their rules and regulations are governed by uh, schedule 5 of the constitution not by schedule 6 schedule 6 is specifically relatable to these four states and to to protect their uh, ethnic values their tribal culture and to protect them from the exploitation from people who are non tribal and allowing them to enter into that area a special provision is made in the constitution the governors of these states are empowered to take decisions regarding the areas under the six schedule the governor can reorganize boundaries of the tribal areas meaning he can create a new tribal area or increase or diminish the area of any autonomous district if there are different scheduled tribes in an autonomous district the governor may by public notification divide the area or areas inhabited by them into autonomous regions the governor can unite two or more autonomous districts or parts of them so as to form one autonomous district the governor can also alter the name of any autonomous district the governor may also appoint a commission to examine and report on any matter relating to the administration of the adcs the acts of parliament or the state legislature often do not apply to autonomous districts and autonomous regions or they apply with specified modifications and exceptions with inputs from Vipul Agarwal bureau report Rajya Sabha TV the sixth schedule is applicable in assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram it gives tribal people freedom to exercise legislative and executive powers through an autonomous regional council and an autonomous district council the adcs are the districts within a state to which central government has given varying degrees of autonomy within the state legislature so let's take a look at the main functions of the ADCs in this report. The sixth schedule gives tribal people freedom to exercise legislative and executive powers through autonomous district councils and autonomous regional councils. Under the sixth schedule, the Indian constitution provides special provisions for the administration of the tribal dominated areas of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. The governors of these four states are empowered to declare some tribal dominated areas of these states as autonomous districts. The governor also has the power to dissolve the ADC and the ARC. The sixth schedule includes 10 autonomous district councils in these four states. In Assam, three autonomous councils fall under the sixth schedule of the constitution. These are Bodoland Territorial Council, Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council and Dima Hassau Autonomous District Council. Meghalaya's Garo Hills Autonomous District Council, Jaintia Hills Autonomous District Council and Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council come under the sixth schedule. Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council in Tripura and Chakma, Lai and Mara are the three autonomous district councils in Mizoram. Bordering uh, China and Myanmar, and there was a necessity that because there is a majority of tribal population living here so that people living in other parts of the country they may not exploit the tribal people who are not very educated very educated and are not aware about their rights therefore a provision was made that instead of central government regulating it the executive power in respect of these four uh, states uh, tribal people uh, and uh, there are about uh, 10 districts in these uh, four states where po tribal population is living and uh, special provision was made for them with regard to that they will be governed by their own council by the district council and this district council is uh, responsible for the health care education roads and other regulatory provision in these area idea is that the normal law made by the parliament or made by the state government will not apply to these area and if applied it can be applied in a modified form therefore there is a provision for autonomous district council in all these areas and all powers with regard to the four activities i have told are given to this autonomous district council and these autonomous district council make rules and regulations by which the education health issues and other areas relating to the tribal uh, people are uh, governed by the regulations made by these autonomous district councils. 
each autonomous district and regional council with the exception of the Bodoland Territorial Council consists of not more than 30 members of which four are nominated by the governor and the rest via elections. All of them remain in power for a term of five years. The district councils and regional councils have powers to make laws on matters of local importance including infrastructure, education, agriculture, health, trade and social security. All these laws require the assent of the governor. For them, the executive power, instead of being vested in the central government, it vests with the state government. And the state government also make provision with regard to their rules and regulations. Of course, as I said, the rules and regulations made by the central government and the state government in their application to these tribal areas, they are not automatically applicable and they can be modified by the autonomous district council and that, that modification is more particularly with a view to protect the rights of the tribal people. The district and regional councils under the sixth schedule have been endowed with wide civil and criminal judicial powers, for example establishing village courts. However, the jurisdiction of these councils is subject to the jurisdiction of the concerned High Court. The laws made by the state legislature on any subject that comes within the jurisdiction of the council would not extend within the jurisdiction of the Autonomous Council. There are certain issues due to which the sixth schedule has ended up creating multiple power centres instead of bringing in a genuine process of autonomy in the region. There are frequent conflicts of interest between the district councils and the state legislatures. For example, in Meghalaya, despite the formation of the state, the whole of the state continues to be under the sixth schedule, causing frequent conflicts with the state government. Councils under the sixth schedule have been given more power than the local governments under the 73rd and 74th amendments in the rest of the country. Granting special provisions to certain minority tribal groups have led to further demands by other groups for such provisions under the sixth schedule. In terms of financial autonomy, there is a huge gap between the approved budget and the funds received from the state government, which has had a direct impact on the development of these tribal communities. In January 2019, the Union Cabinet approved amendment to Article 280 and sixth schedule of the Constitution to increase autonomy, financial resources, and powers of the autonomous district councils in Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram, and Tripura. Bureau report, Rajya Sabati. Time for a very short break on the program, but when we return, we'll tell you about what led to the addition of the sixth schedule of the constitution. Do stay with us. Welcome back, you're watching In Depth. The sixth schedule to administer and provide autonomy to tribal areas of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram was added by the Constituent Assembly in 1949. So let's now uh, look at the historical background and what led to the addition of the sixth schedule to the constitution. In the year 1822, So in 1822, the British enforced the Regulation 10 for administrating the uh, tribal areas of the Northeast. In 1873, the British Indian Administration enacted the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation 1873 to safeguard the tribals of eastern part of Bengal. The 1873 regulation is popularly known as Inner Line Regulation or Inner Line Permit. Scheduled Districts Act of 1874 was enforced in the hill districts where inner line permit was not extended. Subsequently, the whole area was brought under the inner line regulation. The entire tribal dominated backward districts were declared as scheduled districts by the Scheduled District Act of 1874. A new term was introduced in the Government of India Act of 1935 called excluded area. 
Excluded area meant most backward tribal areas which were under direct rule of the governor, having no representation in the provincial legislature. An advisory committee on fundamental rights for minorities and tribals, an excluded area was also set up. Vallabhai Patel was appointed as its chairman by the Constituent Assembly. The Bordeloi Committee's report was discussed by the drafting committee and its recommendations were added in the sixth schedule. After a number of amendments, the sixth schedule was finally incorporated in Article 244, Clause 2 and 275, Clause 1 of the Constitution of India. Now, with the Parliament passing the Citizenship Amendment Act, question arose as to its impact on the areas under the sixth schedule. However, the Act clearly states that its provisions shall not apply to the tribal areas of the four northeastern states included in the sixth schedule, as well as the area covered under the inner line permit. More details in this report. The Citizenship Amendment Act states that its provisions shall not apply to the tribal areas of Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram or Tripura as included in the sixth schedule of the constitution and the area covered under the interline notified under the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation 1873. On 19 December 2019, the Meghalaya Assembly unanimously adopted a resolution urging the centre to implement the inner line permit in the state under the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation 1873. The resolution moved by the Chief Minister was supported by all members across party lines, including the ruling BJP. This is that a person who is living, not living in this uh, tribal area, if he has to go in this area, he has to obtain a special permit from the district administration to enter that permit, uh, to that area. Permit is in fact a permission granted to a person who is a non-tribal and he want to enter in this uh, tribal area for uh, uh, tourism or any other purpose, he can stay there only in accordance with the terms and condition of the permit which is granted to him and only for the period for which this permit is given to him. This uh, procedure started way back during the British era and it is still being continued and the objective of continuing this permit area is that people who are non-tribal when they enter into that area, certain restrictions are imposed on them and following those restrictions, there is time limit with regard uh, during which they can stay in that area. The idea is to protect the right of the tribal people staying in those areas. The inner line permit is a document that allows Indian citizens to visit or stay in a state protected under the ILP system. This system is in force in the four northeastern states of Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram and Manipur. No Indian citizen can visit any of these states unless they belong to that state nor can they overstay beyond the period specified in the ILP. To visit ILP regime states, outsiders, including people from other states of the country, need to take permission. When it comes to tribal areas, these are areas declared in the sixth schedule under Article 244, Clause 2 and 275, Clause 1 of the Constitution in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Tribal areas under 6th schedule have been declared in 10 districts of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. The 6th schedule was formulated to provide limited autonomy to tribal regions in the northeast based on a report of the Bardoloi Committee that was formed by the Constituent Assembly. The report said that due to the administrative system followed by the British, tribal areas of Assam were isolated from other parts of the country. Since most of the areas were severely underdeveloped, there was a need for a system of administration that would allow the tribal areas to become developed while protecting them from exploitation by the people in the plain areas and preserving their distinct social customs. The bill was introduced in the parliament in the last Lok Sabha. There was no exclusion of the tribal areas. But in the bill which was reintroduced after being considered by the committee, and reintroduced when the Lok Sabha was reconstituted, the four states which are there in the sixth schedule, they have been kept out of the purview of the Citizenship Amendment Act. Manipur and Tripura were princely states. Both joined the Indian Union in 1949, but they were out of the scheme of the sixth schedule. Only from 1985, the sixth schedule was implemented in Tripura's tribal areas, but in Manipur, the center said it would be extended shortly but it never took place. Under the Foreigners Protected Areas Order 1958, 
All areas falling under the inner line and the international border of the state are declared as protected areas. Protected areas are located in the whole of Arunachal Pradesh, parts of Himachal Pradesh, parts of Jammu and Kashmir, the whole of Manipur, the whole of Mizoram, the whole of Nagaland, parts of Rajasthan and the whole of Sikkim, partly in protected area and partly in restricted area and also parts of Uttarakhand. With input from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us today in depth. We'll be back same time on Monday now with a comprehensive view on some other subject of current significance. In case you miss the television broadcast of our program, you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. And of course, you can also send in your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.